The Panasonic G9 is not just a great photo camera, but it includes some very powerful video features as well. In order to access all of the video features though, it's going to depend on how you set the recording format and the recording quality. So let's walk you through how to use recording quality and recording format. We're first going to access the camera's menu setting. From the menu, we're going to go to the second tab. That's the movie camera tab, and it should be page one. At the top, you'll see record format, and under record format, you're going to have two different options. The top option, AVC HD, is only going to give you 1080 video. You'll have no access to 4K. It's recommended you only use this if you need long recording times, since it compresses the video more. Your second option is called MP4, which is the one we're going to select for this next setting. And MP4 is going to give you access to 4K video up to 60 frames per second. Once you've selected your recording format, recording quality is the second option. And they are in a hierarchy starting with the highest quality first, which in this case would be 4K60, working its way all the way down to 1080p. The Panasonic G9 has a really great feature that allows you to use the USB port to not only power the camera, but to charge the battery as well. So you can use something like a small battery charger for your phone, or if you're tethering in studio, it'll make sure that it keeps the battery fully charged. I want to point a couple things out in the menu. To get started, make sure that the USB power supply is set to on. This is done by going to the menu, the wrench, and then on page 3 of 5, you turn USB power supply from off to on. Once you do that and you have the USB plugged in, you'll notice that there is now a charging icon on the screen. As you know, the Panasonic G9 offers a phenomenal touchscreen, and that touchscreen can be customized to your heart's content. Let's go in and check out how we can change some of those settings. To get started, click the menu button. From here, click on the custom wrench. You'll see an option for operation. We're going to go ahead and select that. On page 4 of 6, you'll notice that there's an option for touch settings. Let's go into that menu. The first thing we have is touchscreen on or off. Do you want to use the touchscreen or not want to use the touchscreen? That's where you can toggle that choice. Touch tab. If you notice on the screen, there's this little tab along the right hand side of the touchscreen that allows you to get to kind of quick access for different settings. You can turn that on or off. Touch AF. So there's a couple different options under Touch AF. So when you touch the screen, when you're creating your exposure, it'll focus. Or you can also have it do auto exposure. And the final option is off. You could totally turn that off. The final setting is Touchpad AF. So when you're using that viewfinder and you have it up to your eye, you can actually use the touch screen still if you have this set to one of these two modes. The two modes are exact, so if you touch the screen, that's where the focus point's going to move to, or the offset option, which works more like a mouse, so you can kind of shimmy it over or shimmy it back. And then finally, if you don't want it to do anything, you can click on off. Those are the different touch settings for the Panasonic G9. The Panasonic G9 offers two really neat features. One, time lapse. Number two, stop animation. To get started, simply move your mode dial all the way to the end. This is your stop animation or time lapse function. Let's head into the menu. So to get started, hit the menu button, and then in the camera, page 405, you'll see an option for time lapse and animation. Let's go ahead and select that now. You'll see under time lapse we have a couple different options. The first being start time. Let's say you don't want to wake up at 4 a.m. to see those tulips blooming. You can simply set this setting and the camera will turn on and do that for you. Next we have shooting interval. You'll see that you can change how often it takes photos and then how many photos you want. It's worth noting you can take up to 9,999 images. Let's move on to stop animation. So under stop animation, you'll see that there are a couple different features. The first one being add to picture group. Add to picture group is great if you want to pick up where you left off with a previous stop animation. Moving on to auto shooting. Let's say you're a one man band and you want to do a stop animation. By having the auto shooting turned on, it'll automatically take an image every so often. And once you turn this on, you'll see an option to set how often it's going to take those pictures. We're just going to do a manual one for now. So let's go ahead and get started. We'll take our first image, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. 
Okay, so we've taken our images, so now it's time to end the stop animation. Hit the number seven, end stop animation, yes. Create video now, yes. And it's worth noting, these features that are displayed on screen on exporting the video are the same as if you were doing a time lapse. We'll go ahead and hit OK. Create the, create the video now. And you'll see that we now have our stop animation. And here's a video that we did earlier. Many people have an interest in embedding the time and date of photos and other information. The G9 gives you several options to be able to do this. Let's go into the menu and show you how it's done. So if you've already taken a photograph and you want to add timestamp information to it, you first go to the text stamp option in the playback menu. So this is the play menu, page two of three, text stamp. Once there, you have an option of either tagging multiple images or a single image. We're going to choose a single image. You would then select your photo. This is the photo we're going to choose. You can press set here or here. From this point, you then press set to choose which options you want off or on. The top option is, is it going to embed the date or with time and date? Name. This would be names that you've already stored under your baby or dog or face recognition settings. This means it would use face recognition to recognize the person's face, pull the name from that setting. Location information. If you have the G9 connected to your phone via Bluetooth, it's always pulling GPS information to each photograph. You could then pull that information and have it time stamped onto your photo. Travel date. If this was a trip and you would change the travel information in the camera's menu, it will then embed the date information for that trip. Finally, you can add a title so that it embeds a title over the screen. But what if you don't want to go through and add all of those things, or you just need a legal timestamp because you're using it for court or for legal purposes? The G9 can actually embed timestamp information in real time for both video and photography. Once you're in the menu, we want to go to the movie camera menu if you need to timestamp for video. From this point, you'll have an option that says timestamp record. Simply turn that on. It'll take the date and time information from the camera and embed it into the video. Keep in mind, this is going to be permanently etched into the video. There's no way to remove it. Your next option is timestamp for photography. Simply select timestamp record, turn that feature on. And once again, remember, it's going to be permanently etched into the photograph. There's no way to remove it once it's been added. And that's how you use timestamp in the G9. There are times when it's very important to have a completely silent camera. There's times when you might need it on a movie set or even at a wedding ceremony. That's why the Panasonic G9 offers you a completely silent mode known as silent mode. There's two ways to access this feature. Number one is on the front of the camera. You can see that there's a switch that you can go on and off. And the factory default setting is for this switch to be set to silent mode. You also have the ability within the menu to actually click the camera menu. And then you'll see the camera option here. We're going to go to four of five and you'll see that silent mode can be turned on and off. There are two things that you'll notice about having silent mode turned on. Number one is on screen, you'll get an indicator of the E and then the shutter button. That's telling you that the camera is in electronic shutter mode. Also during electronic shutter mode, you will have no access to flash features. The Panasonic G9 has one of the best stabilization systems that you can find in any camera. And what's cool about this system is it offers you a lot of different settings to customize it to your given uses. Let's go ahead and show you how you can make these adjustments in both the video settings as well as the photo setting. So what we're going to do is we're going to the camera's menu. Now you see the top tab, that's the photo tab. On page three, we have where it says stabilizer. This will be for your photo settings. If we select the movie camera menu on the second tab, now we're on page two, stabilizer will be different for video. In this case, we're going to do our settings from the photo mode, but don't worry, all the video and photo settings are in here as well. So once we've selected stabilizer, we have an option that says operation mode. The top option means the camera's going to stabilize on all five axes of stabilization. 
But if I'm using it for photography and I'm trying to pan with a subject, sometimes that sensor is moving against my movement and it can be a little troubling to try to track a subject. So we select the bottom option if we're panning for photography and trying to keep up with the subject. Our second option is electronic stabilization, and this only affects video shooting. What this is going to do is it's actually going to move the image around on the sensor on top of the sensor actually moving itself and the lens is moving with it as well, giving you an unprecedented level of stability. The bottom option says IS lock for video. Now, this is a great feature for people who don't want to bring a tripod and want the footage to look like the tripod was just locked down and held steady. It's going to really hold that camera steady. The drawback here is if you want to pan with it, it's really going to fight against any camera movement that you put into the camera. Our final menu option in the stabilization menu says focal length set. This will usually be grayed out unless you're using a camera lens that doesn't communicate to the body. All micro four thirds lenses that have autofocus communicate to our bodies and they tell us what the focal length of the lens is. But if you're adapting over a Canon lens or a Nikon lens, it may not be able to communicate that information. And we have to know the focal length of the lens in order to be able to stabilize it correctly. So once we access this setting, you then have three presets. One says 24 millimeters, one says 35, and one says 50. You can go ahead and customize those if you'd like, if there are three focal lengths you use pretty consistently. If the lens is a new lens that you've not preset up, you can then manually adjust it to whatever you want that lens to be. So we'll say at a 55 millimeter, and you can even do in 10th increments of millimeter as well. Once you hit set, now it's set for that focal length. Now, if you don't wanna remember where that is in the menu, but you wanna use some adapted lenses, that's fine. Every time you turn the camera off and then turn the camera back on, when you have a lens that's mounted that is not a native micro four thirds lens with autofocus, the camera will automatically ask you, would you like to change the focal length? Simply answer yes, and you have access to changing your focal lengths and optimizing it for the IS system. The Panasonic G9 offers several different ways for you to control how the shutter behaves on the camera. You can access these by selecting menu under the camera and then menu number four of five. The factory default, as you can see here under shutter type, is mechanical shutter. If you select that option, you'll see that there are four different options. I'm going to start with the second one, which is mechanical shutter. The mechanical shutter allows you to use a mechanical shutter throughout the entire exposure. Electronic first curtain shutter allows you to use an electronic shutter at the beginning and a mechanical shutter towards the end of the exposure, thus reducing shutter shock. And finally, the electronic shutter. The electronic shutter uses an electronic shutter throughout the entire exposure, both at the beginning of the end. It's worth noting that there, you will not have access to flash features in the electronic shutter mode. If you want the camera to decide from these three options what you want it to do, just choose the auto button and it'll make the decision for you. The Panasonic G9 offers a feature known as post focus. With post focus, you compose a shot and then the camera records all the different focal planes and then it allows you to choose what you want in focus after the fact. Let's go ahead and demo how you do that. To get started, you're going to want to move the drive dial to the point where you see the flower and the mountains. Once you're in this mode, you'll press halfway down for focus and as soon as it locks on, you'll press the button and you'll notice as it's going through, it's recording all the different things that it can focus on in the frame. Now what it's doing is it's taking all those and it's allowing you to choose what you want in focus. So you can see here if I want the dice in focus or maybe I want this pawn in focus, I'm able to choose so. One of the really, really cool features is the ability to actually merge all of them together. So that's what we're gonna do here. By selecting function button one, selecting auto merge, you can then merge everything together. It's also worth noting, if you only want a portion of the image in focus, you can also do what's called a range merge. Let's take a look at that merged photo. There are times where it's great to be able to take multiple pictures with changing settings like the exposure or the focus position or the aperture of the lens. And the G9 offers a bracketing function that can do all of those things plus white balance. Let's go ahead and look in the menu and show you all the different bracketing functions. 
So we go to the camera's menu. We want to be in the top option, the top tab, and we want to be on page five of five. The option bracketing is defaulted to off. When you select bracketing, you have one, two, three, four, five different options. It's important to note that the bottom two white balance options will only be available if you have the white balance set a specific way. In this case, we have it set to Kelvin, which means that both white balance options will be available to us. Going to the top option is exposure bracketing. Once we select exposure bracketing, you then go to the more settings section. Under more settings, you have the option of changing how many photos you're going to take and what the stops will be in between those photos. In this example, we'll do five shots, each shot one exposure apart. Once you've done this, you can then choose the sequence. Are they going to start at the middle point and then go negative exposure, positive exposure, negative exposure, positive exposure? Or you can choose to have it start with the lowest exposures, go to the center point, and then go to the positive exposures. That's how I like to do it. So we're going to do negative, zero, positive. And once we've got that, the bottom option is single shot. Do I only want it to do one shot at a time? So I'm going to have to hit the button for each exposure change. Or do I want to be able to hold it down and have it do it as a burst? In this example, we do it as a burst. And as you can see on the screen, it just changed from very dark to very bright as it did our shots. Our next function is f-stop bracketing or aperture bracketing. Under the more settings tab, you can choose how many different images you're going to change. Are you going to take three images, five images, or are you just going to have this thing change iris or aperture all the way until it's gone from the widest setting to the, the smallest setting? In this case, we're just going to do three for this demonstration. Now that we have it set for our three shots, we have pressed the shutter. We just took three pictures, each picture with a different f-stop value. The next bracketing function is focus bracketing. Under the settings for focus bracketing, you can choose how granular the focus is going to change. Um, this is important because if you're going to focus stack, you might want very narrow changes in focus so that you have very thin slivers of things that are in focus. Other times, if I'm just doing bracketing because I'm doing a macro shot and I just don't really know what I want to have in focus, you might want it to have much larger changes in focus. So in this case, we're going to go with plus 10, which would be a very granular change. Image count. How many shots am I going to take? You can do up to 999 choices. I'm not going to make you sit here through 999. We'll just do five shots. And then the sequence. Do we start with the closest focus to the furthest focus, or do we start at the center point for focus, and then we go further away, closer, further away, closer? In this case, I like to change that to zero to plus. And now we take our pictures. And now each of those shots has a different focus. The next function for bracketing is white balance. Now we have two different types of white balance. The top option will allow us to take three pictures with three different white balance settings. And we can choose how we change white balance. Do we make a very fine change between amber and blue? Or do we make a very fine change between green and magenta? As we turn the wheel, there'll be a more dramatic difference between those three images that are captured. So in this case, we're going to go green to magenta. The middle image will end up being the proper white balance. We then hit set, press the shutter button. Now it's important to note, I only took one picture. It doesn't actually need to take multiple pictures because it's going to extract just a raw photo and then apply three white balances to that image and then create your JPEG and raw file. So what we do is we go into the camera menu. I apologize. We hit play. Now you can see the three different white balances that it captured with just one picture. The last bracket function is white balance in Kelvin. Under more settings, you can choose to have a very fine change in Kelvin at just 100 Kelvin changes, 
up to 500 Kelvin changes. We're going to do 500 Kelvin changes for this. We would normally do this less for creativity. The, the previous version is for very creative expression of white balance. This is more, I'm not 100% certain which white balance I like the best, but I want it to be very accurate. So I'm going to take and grab, grab three images, each of them only about a 500 Kelvin to 100 Kelvin difference. Now that I've done that, I take one picture and play the image back in the menu. And you can see they're much more subtle, the changes in white balance versus the previous option, which is these very garish differences in white balance. And those are all your bracketing functions. Panasonic. When outdoors at night, shooting photography or video, you might not want to have the bright screen. You might want to turn it down, you might want to dim it, but we have an even better option, and that is night mode. To get started, let's head over to the camera. First, click the menu button. Go to the wrench, and then you'll see an option for night mode. Once you click on that, you'll be able to turn night mode on or off. And as you can see, it turns red and all the brightness is down, so that way you can control the camera at night and still see what you're doing. That's how you turn on night mode on the Panasonic G9. In the Panasonic G9, you have the ability to take all of the different functions and features that you use most often and put them in a customized My Menu setting. Let's go over to the camera and see how this is done. To get started, click on the menu option. From here, select the little purple person and select the My Menu setting. From here, you can see there's a couple options grayed out, but the one that you're able to select is Add. When you click on the Add button, it brings up all the different menu choices. So from here, you can go through and find the things that you use most often and put them in the menu. I'm gonna go through and add some of my favorites. Quality. my flash settings, and I'm also going to add my stabilizer settings. So as you can see now, the other options are no longer grayed out. Sorting allows you to put what's most important to you at the top of the menu. So we can select what's most important. So for me, flash. I'm going to take that setting and I'm going to move it up to the very top. So you can see now when you look at your menu, flash, quality, stabilizer, they're in the order in which you deem is most important. From there, delete. From there we can remove different items or maybe reset the whole menu if you want to start over. I'm going to go through and delete the stabilizer option. And finally, display from my menu. This setting allows you to make it so when you hit the menu button, it automatically just goes directly to your my menu setting. So I'll go ahead and turn that on and show you when you go to my menu, boom, it shows up. The Panasonic G9 offers access to a microphone jack as well as a headphone jack. This makes it much easier for you to add better quality sound and monitor your sound when you're recording videos. Now we're going to cover how to use the microphone settings for not only third-party microphones, but also some special settings that are exclusive to the Panasonic MS2 microphone. Let's go ahead and look at the menu and we'll walk through the different settings. So our first setting is mic level display. Right now it's off. When I turn this on, you'll get these levels right here on the lower left hand side of the screen to let you know if you're getting into the red or what we call peaking the audio, which is going to add some bad tonality. The next option is mic level adjustment. If your microphone's too quiet, this is where you would turn it up, or if the microphone is too loud, this is where you would turn it down. There is an easier way to do this, however. As long as you have the mode dial in the creative movie mode, that's the picture of the movie camera with an M next to it, you'll get a tab here on the left that has a picture of a movie camera. Simply press that tab. Once you're in that tab, you'll have access to level controls. And then you can do them manually right on the screen. The next option is mic level limiter. Sometimes people talk very loud and then other people talk quiet. And when those differences in volume happen, a mic level limiter will make them closer to each other so it's not so dynamic. The benefit of it is that it doesn't blow you out of the screen when you're watching a, a video. The drawback is when there's quiet passages, you might hear some hiss. Next function is called wind cut. So wind cut allows us to attenuate the volume 
of wind as it blows past the microphone. However, this does audio, alter the audio signal, so a better way to handle that is with something like a windsock. Uh, this is included with the price of an MS-2 and it just slides right over the microphone and it helps to absorb wind. Our next function is called sound output. It has an option that says real time and an option that has recorded sound. Real time is going to be effectively what the mic is picking up before it's hitting the analog stage and then turn into a digital signal. When we go from real time to recorded sound, you're actually listening to the final recorded file. So if you're really critical about the sound quality, you'll know exactly what the recording is. However, there will be a delay. So if you're hearing someone talk on set, you're gonna hear them before you hear the sound through the headphones. Now the last menu I skipped and I'm going back to it and that's called the special mic. That menu will only be illuminated when we use the MS2 mic and we have it connected to the microphone jack. That lets the camera know we're using a special microphone. It has special features. The first feature is that it has a stereo array right in the top. So I can use this high quality stereo pickup if I want more ambient sound picked up, or maybe I want to pick up the sound of a stream to be able to add that as a secondary layer of audio. You can do that with that microphone. Going down to the next option is going to switch to the shotgun mic. And as I zoom the camera's lens, the microphone pickup will narrow as I narrow the angle of view. It will get wider as I widen the angle of view of the, of the lens. The next option is shotgun. That's a standard shotgun pickup. The next one will be an even narrower pickup. The last option is manual. And when we select manual, we can alter how wide or how narrow the pickup is of the microphone to our own taste. Now to do this, you really should use a set of headphones so you can listen to the change. So when we add a set of headphones, with this headphone jack right here. You might need to adjust the volume of your headphones. Well, when you plug a set of headphones into the side of the G9, the wheel that's around the menu dial becomes your headphone volume control. And those are the audio features of the G9. When using manual focus, one of the great benefits to a mirrorless camera is that full-time live view experience because it lets you magnify the image and make sure that it's in perfect focus. Panasonic offers this in the G9 with a feature called MF Assist. Let's go over to the camera and show you how to use the feature. So we want to go to the camera's menu. We have a wrench with a C symbol right here. You'll see an option that says focus, release, shutter. We select that option. Here we have MF Assist, which is on page three of six. The default is that we use the manual focus ring to automatically engage MF Assist. So as I turn this ring, what you'll see is a magnified box that pops up on the screen. Now, this is great for photography. The problem we run into is if we're doing anything with video, it's also sending that box magnified up the HDMI connection and into our external monitor. If this was a recorder, it would record that and it would ruin our take. Going back into the menu under MF Assist, you'll see we have a second option, which is a box with additional smaller boxes inside of it. What that means is that as I adjust the manual focus ring, you'll see it doesn't give me the magnification. But if I double tap the screen, now I get that MF Assist window. In addition, we have an option that lets you do oper operation from both the ring or the touch screen. And finally, we have off if you don't want to use the MF Assist function. One of the great things about a mirrorless camera, and specifically the Panasonic G9, is the ability to have a LVF or a live viewfinder. That allows you to see exactly what's going on in front of the camera and exactly what the sensor is seeing right through this viewfinder. So on top of being really, really high resolution, you also have the ability to change the frame rate so it can be even sharper. Let's go into the menu and show you how that's done. So to get started, simply click on the menu button here. Go to the wrench and then menu two of five. From here you can see that it goes to LVF display speed. If you'd like to turn that up simply click on that setting and go to 120 FPS. Panasonic.